Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goinke, and today I want to discuss the importance of warming up. And I want to discuss it solely in the perspective of energy systems development and energy systems in the body. I don't really want to talk about all the good mobility and movement stuff that it gets you because I think that can get really, really intricate. What I want to talk about today is our theme of energy systems. And we've already discussed the importance of the aerobic system. That's, that's the system that needs oxygen to make energy. That's the system that's, you know, making most of your uh, energy throughout the day, period, and throughout most exercise, especially repetitive exercise. If I just sprint for two minutes and then I stop, then maybe, you know, during the exercise, it wasn't that big a deal. Um, it's still somewhat of a big deal, but maybe it wasn't that big a deal during those two minutes. But the aerobic system is going to help you recover from that two minute sprint, which has got to be so nauseating. Um, and it's going to help you, you know, keep living after your workout. Now, let's get back to the task at hand. That is warming up. The whole idea physiologically behind warming up is I start to get that aerobic system going. So the aerobic system has so many steps. I should count them someday. Um, it has, it's the most complicated of uh, all of our three energy systems, right? Remember, we have our alactic anaerobic system, we have our lactic anaerobic system, and then we have our aerobic system. That's the one that requires oxygen. So we need to keep breathing during our warm-ups, but we also need to get the muscles moving. We have to start increasing the demand of energy because otherwise there's nothing to say, hey, aerobic system, you need to start revving up. Mitochondria, let's get going. You need to start moving some hydrogen ions around. Um, so that is, you know, the biggest purpose of it. So for the warm-up, if I, if I just do mobility stuff, I'm probably not putting much demand on that energy. Um, I'm probably not asking for much energy. And so I'm not, you know, stimulating the increase in energy. I'm not getting that, I'm not jump-starting that aerobic system. Um, so what I need to be able to do is just do some general cardio. If you're a power lifter, you, you might not want to hop on the bike. I get that. But make sure you do a bunch of warm up sets so that your muscles are not only is your brain used to the pattern, but also your muscles are used to contracting and not just your muscles, but all of your muscles and not just contracting, but the timing of the contractions as well. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. But if I do an effective warm up, I don't have to, you know, start out really slowly when I, you know, the example that I have here is a marathon. If I've only got, you know, three hours to run a marathon, I don't want to spend the first five or 15 minutes kind of running at a slower pace so that my legs don't gas out. I want to be pretty warmed up. So it's not about conserving your energy at that point. Your body has the energy. You just have to teach it how to mobilize it. And so just doing a warm up bypasses a big part of that limitation there, which is my aerobic system is slow to start. It is um, not producing a whole lot of energy right off the bat. So if I can take that, you know, negative five minutes before my activity starts and I can start moving around a lot, maybe even 15 minutes, then I can get not just uh, energy going, but I can get the temperature up. So all of these uh, biochemical processes work better.